is the pit bull of comedy. They call him Yid Vicious. He is incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, Bobby Slayton. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, my friend. I'd like to sit and chat with you. I'm a little busy right now. Now listen, before I go on, I'm not a racist guy. I'm not apologizing for what I'm saying, but I live in L.A. I live in the Mexican part of L.A. It's called, uh, L.A. And you know what, Siegel, look, and, and again, it's a comedy, you know, we're doing a comedy show, it's not a soapbox. I understand we had to raise money for people. But you know what amazes me? When people come to our country, and you look at a lot of minorities, you know, people come from these horrible third world countries, like Mexico, and Guatemala, and Haiti, and Cuba. I understand why they come here. These are dirty, filthy, disgusting countries. And you would think with all the fucking cleaning women that come out of there. <laughs> what, what? You would think that if each one of them picked up one piece of shit on the way over the fence, that it would be a very nice area. You would think that, you white guilty liberals. You would think that. What I'm saying is, and I want to make a point here. Look, we're trying to raise money for the homeless. There are people in this country that can't feed their families. There are people in this country that can't clothe their children. What bothers me to no end is when people come to America and they expect something from America. They have no skills, they don't speak the language, and they come here expecting a piece of the American dream, which Americans can't even get. I'll tell you why I bring this up. Two days ago, I'm in Miami, and I get off a plane. And this Haitian cab driver is driving me to my hotel, and the guy's got an attitude, because he's from Haiti, and he doesn't want to drive a cab in America. And very nicely, I said to the guy, well, you're from Haiti. What do you want to do here? The guy says to me, in Haiti, I was a doctor. I said, fucking Haiti, I could be a doctor. <laughs> what does it take to be a doctor in Haiti? What do you need, a chicken foot and a band-aid? Buddha, Buddha, Buddha. I'm a doctor. Oh, shut up, voodoo man, and take me to my fucking hotel. <laughs> but you know the one thing that I like about other countries? is they don't put up with shit. They've got the death penalty, and they have swift punishment. Which here in America, people get away with more crap. People get away with murder. No names we have to mention, but... <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. And I'm sure there's anti-death penalty people here, which I don't understand. Because you know who never gets a death penalty in this country? Are crazy people, and mentally ill people. That's a defense in America. Are oh, my clients crazy? He doesn't know what he did. Fine, then he doesn't know we're going to kill him. You know, the guy's that retarded. You put him in the electric chair and tell him it's a fucking ride. <laughs> Speaking of retarded people, I am um, celebrating my eighth wedding anniversary tomorrow night. That was a beautiful segue. I just made that up. You know, and I look at the people here in love. I look at the young couples, and it amazes me. You know, you hear this bullshit about marriage. How married men live longer. Yeah, it just seems longer. Believe me. <laughs> I can't wait to get Alzheimer's disease. That's no pussy every night. The day that I wake up and I don't recognize my wife, I'm going to be one happy son of a bitch. That Reagan has no idea of how lucky he is. Doesn't recognize that battle axe he's married to, that Stepford wife with a big fucking E.T. head of hers. A lot of married men get that Alzheimer's, and you know what else they get? My father's got it. I don't mean to make a joke of this, but they get uh, Parkinson's disease. You know, the head's always shaking up and down. You know why my father's got that? You know why married men get that? It's from being married so long. He is so used to agreeing with my mother that the head is automatically doing this. Which is great, because she thinks he's listening, he's watching the game, and everybody's happy. Yeah. You know, it's so funny, too, because tomorrow night is my, is my anniversary tomorrow night. I'm taking my wife out to dinner, and we, she thought the comic relief was going to take place on her anniversary. And I said, you know, honey... Even if it did take place, you know, she wanted me to cancel it because she wanted to go away for the weekend. And I said, look, you know what? I'm not going to turn down comic relief. Robin invited me to do this. See, women, you know what it is? You know, you love holidays more than guys and events, birthdays, anniversaries. Things seem to be a lot more to you. Like Valentine's Day, for example. Of course women like Valentine's Day. It's your day. You get flowers, candy, jewelry, dinner, perfume. What do we get? We get to buy you all this shit. It's not our day. If we had a day, like blowjob day... Thank you very much. You've been great. Thank you very much. Good night.